What's up, everybody? Welcome back to your favorite New York Jets subscription podcast, Badlands. I'm your host, Joe Caparoso. Sunday, AM Coffee. Um, we're wrapping up a series. We've been doing this for like, I don't know, like 10, 12 weeks now. Rolling along through every part of the Jets roster. Last week, we did the coaching staff. This week, we will conclude this series with the front office. Before we get into it, I have to remind you, all of these episodes are brought to you by Magic Mind, right here, of which I am having one every single morning. Not as a coffee replacement, but as a nice time-release caffeine, little mental shot, doctors validated, mushrooms organically grown in the great state of California, matcha, highest possible grade, nano encapsulation technology, tastes good. It's a very quick shot, shoots right down, helps keep me focused when I'm recording 1,400 podcasts in a week, which I love doing, but requires some mental focus, no risk, confident in that you try it. And if you don't like it, there's a refund, no questions asked up for your first 100 days after buying. Shipped internationally to over 65 countries. We also have a nice new limited offer for our good friends. If you use code BADLANDS40, you get up to 40% off for a subscription. This is only available for a handful of people. So I will link it in the bio, but if you just use code BADLANDS40, you will get 40% off a, a subscription, which is certainly worth it. So again, Magic Mind, thank you. Appreciate you supporting Sunday AM Coffee, which will evolve as we get into the season, right? We're not going to do a roster breakdown. We'll have the 12-pack. We'll have other things that are filtering in. But Let's talk front office. I am recording this Thursday night. So if Hassan Reddick has signed since then, you probably won't be seeing this because I will probably have to record a different episode. I don't think he will be signed by the time this releases Sunday morning. I think it's I think it's around the Giants game now. I know I keep moving the goalpost. That that's my optimistic take. I'll I'll talk about or I will have talked about that situation more elsewhere. I want to talk about Joe Douglas in the front office, who we haven't talked about a lot recently, right? It's been a lot of Robert Sala, a lot of roster talk. This is normal when the season starts because the, Joe, the, the GM and the front office should not be front and center. And Douglas is not very out there when it comes to the media, which is okay. Most GMs aren't. Douglas, we've probably been more critical of him than most. And people are always going to be more critical of the head coach than the general manager. The head coach is out there more. It's more of a public face of the franchise. It's an easier solve to fix a head coach problem than a GM problem, especially in this current structure. Joe Douglas is effectively the most powerful football guy in the Jets organization. On the non-business side of the house and the business side gets involved sometimes, he's the top guy. Fixing or replacing your top guy is scary and complicated. Head coaches, it's like, well, we just fix the head coach, everything will be fine. Of course, it usually doesn't work out like that as we know better than anybody. It's not surprising that Douglas gets less heat than Salah. And to be fair, I'll stick to my consistent line that through their tenures, Douglas has probably been like a C plus, but gets treated like an A by most fans. And Salah's probably been like a C minus or a D plus and gets treated like an F minus by most fans. So Douglas has been better than Salah. But he hasn't been that much better, and the record bears that out, right? He's 27 and 56. You know, After the season, we'll have 100 games. Like, that's a lot. He's going to be one of the longest tenured Jets general managers ever, and he has not sniffed the playoffs. And this has not been a conventional rebuild by any means. You know, the, the Ravens-Eagles model that Douglas is going to stick to, that's not what they did here, right? They, they tried on Zach Wilson. They missed. They pivoted. They threw a Rodgers Hail Mary. They hit it. They didn't properly prepare for him potentially being injured last year, and the whole season went to shit. This year, this offseason, I think they've done a better job of really leaning into the last dance Jets mantra that we've been talking about and recognizing that their circumstances have changed. So their previous like modes of team building have to go out the window because you're in such a unique situation here where you're trying to, to in effect, copy the model the Rams and the Bucks used to win recent Super Bowls, where the rest of the roster is like, kind of there, and then you go get a very veteran quarterback to help get it over the edge. And ironically, the Jets have had an offseason I've liked the most 
Once they've gotten rid of Rex Hogan and Chad Alexander, two guys that we were nitpicking on, like, why why are these guys still here? Why did Hogan leave and come back? Why why are Douglas's lieutenants here? The front off, if you're going to run it back with Sala and Douglas, you have to shake up their inner circles. And it didn't seem like they were going to do that, but to the Jets' credit, they did. Douglas is number two, gone. Douglas is number three, gone. Phil Savage has effectively become the number two, is our understanding, along with a couple other voices in the building. Sala didn't have the major shakeup, but lost a handful of positional coaches. And Rogers coming into the mix is in some ways shaking it up from a coaching perspective, along with Tyron Smith and some of the other veterans that they added. But when it comes to the front office, it's a it's a different slimmed down group. And that seems to have benefited the Jets well. Some of this ends up being luck where maybe their plan A wasn't as good as their plan B. Like you watch something like Hard Knocks and it didn't really seem like their plan A was – Tyron Smith, it was it was more to go get Runyon uh, from the Packers, which yeah, could have been fine, but it ended up working out where for this year and maybe for next year, the Jets did what they needed to do to maximize their window of a healthy Aaron Rodgers. They overdid it on the offensive line with Tyron Smith with a smart Morgan Moses trade and taking what I think will prove to be ultimately the right pick in old fashion now once they couldn't trade up and get Roma Dudze. So they're fine there, or as fine as you really can be on paper. I thought they took a very reasonably priced gamble on Mike Williams. It's a one-year deal. The upside is certainly worth it to go with Garrett Wilson. If they could figure out the goddamn contract in a one- to two-year vacuum, Huff for Reddick, you can justify, although the whole situation has not been handled great. They should have just paid Huff and kept him, but the conversation for a different day. rest of the defense, not perfect, but very good, and will be good with Salah, and you got to let those guys do their thing. On paper, it's a good enough roster to win the AFC East, which for the most part is Douglas's job. He doesn't get fully absolved of injuries and things happen because that's why it's hard to be a GM. But his job is to put a winning product on the field, and they haven't done that yet. He also, this always gets conveniently left out. He manages Robert Sala. Sala reports to him. He hired Sala. (laughs) He signed off on that. That and his staff. So he is accountable for Robert Sala. So if you don't like Robert Sala, remember Joe Douglas hired him and Joe Douglas manages him. And Joe Douglas ostensibly has the power to remove him whenever he wants. So Douglas is the guy. And if the Jets, there's a weird zone here where there's one end of the spectrum where if the Jets are really good this year, they win the division, they win a playoff game. Both Sala and Douglas are going to get extensions. There's the other end of the spectrum where if they go 6-11 and and it goes to hell, both of them are going to be gone. There's this middle zone where if they're like eight, nine, and nine or eight, and like barely sneak into the playoffs, but it's kind of a disappointing year, they'll keep Douglas, but move on from Sala. And that will be sort of the little dial they turn. Fair or unfair. I think those guys should sink or swim together, which I know isn't a popular take. That's just my stance on it. Uh, he's been a flawed GM. Every GM is flawed and makes mistakes, especially if you've been GM for 83 games to date. If you add everything up, all the tallies, there's probably more negatives than positives, but the positives have a potential to be big enough to clear a lot of the mistakes. If Rodgers works this year, it kind of rinses the taste of Zach Wilson out of your mouth, especially if you get two years out of Rodgers and you're like, you're in the mix and in the tournament. You have some ugly draft moments with Mekhi Becton and Denzel Mims and that entire class, and we'll see what happens with Will McDonald and some of their other picks we didn't love. Sauce, Brees, Garrett, Jermaine, you know, fashion who's good. Throw enough darts, you hit your high round picks. That's kind of what matters the most ultimately if you get stars there. And recently, there are signs that he can do that. So is he better than McCagnan and Idzik? Without question. That should not be the goal. That's a very low bar to clear. He is not proven to be better than Tannenbaum yet. And I know people hate that take also. Tannenbaum won a lot of playoff games. So Joe Douglas needs to have one winning record and win one playoff game before we have that conversation, which I think he's capable of doing this year. And I do think if you ask me as of recording this on August 15th, I think the Jets will win enough games that both Joe Douglas and Robert Sala will be here next year. And I think like that's going to be like Douglas, if he's here another two, three years, he could end up being like basically the longest tenured Jets GM Certainly in modern history, if not in their overall history, I got to dig up the numbers. But once you're at like 115, 125 games like that, Tannenbaum didn't get there. Certainly McCadden and Idzik didn't get there. Terry Bradway didn't get there. Parcells didn't get there. You know, you got to go way back to the 60s probably 
uh, to see anyone who got remotely close to that. It's very uncommon in today's NFL to get that much rope, uh, especially if you're not consistently winning a ton. I think like Bruce Allen might be the most like recent comparison where I think he was with Washington for like eight, nine years and there wasn't a ton of winning in there, but you know, ultimately he stuck around for a while. Hopefully Douglas has more winning in the back half of his tenure. So uh, I like the roster this year. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't, I, I, they did exactly the kind of stuff I wanted this off season, getting Tyron, getting Mike Williams, getting Reddick if they could land the plane. Um, they drafted a guy I really liked in Malachi Corley on day two. Uh, I'm certainly warming like the decision with fashion news after they couldn't go get Rome, who was the guy I really wanted around one. Let's say they found a nice UDFA and Leonard Taylor. So optimistic about this whole thing fitting together. Let's hope it works out. And listen, I hope more than anything that the Jets are great this year and win playoff games and Douglas gets a big extension and people dig up anything critical we've ever said about him and throw it in our face. I would love that. I just want to see the Jets win. I don't care if I was ultimately wrong about Douglas three years ago. So let's hope it works out. Thank you for listening to the Sunday Coffee Series. Next version will probably be a notebook dump on the last preseason game, and then we're going to be sort of into the regular season rotation of it. This upcoming week, normal full week of content. Other guys Monday, um, War Room Tuesday, Podcast Wednesday, uh, Article Thursday, Fuck the Trend Friday, preseason coverage Saturday, Back to Coffee Sunday, show announcement, new show announcement, which... We're hinting and we're hinting at new show will premiere August 29th and run on Thursdays among maybe a few other days. Uh, we'll announce that at some point this week. Also, BadlandsToj.com. We reloaded on crew necks, t-shirts, extra larges, larges. So they, they flew so fast we had to reload. So go check those out. Thank everyone for listening. Thank you, Magic Mind. We'll talk to you soon.